sure Brendan O'Neill, my next guest, chief political writer at Spike, will have some thoughts on this as well. Black Friday becomes Block Friday with a blockade by Extinction Rebellion of those sites at Amazon, which basically you know, deliver the goods you order online. They have to come from somewhere physical. Uh, they're not going to be able to get those goods out uh, today. What do you make of that? Oh, God, it just shows how painfully bourgeois Extinction Rebellion is. You know, they're now and they're so anti-consumer. You know, they hate the idea of people spending their hard earned money and buying things and getting new stuff that apparently we don't need. Yeah, it's just that achingly middle class contempt for what ordinary people do. It really gets on my nerves. Yeah, they're, they're, how dare you get something you couldn't afford otherwise uh, cheaper? Yeah. And uh, yeah, exactly. Also, you mentioned hard earned money. I have an awful feeling that an awful lot of the Extinction Rebellion people have never had any hard earned money in their lives but there we are um let's uh, let's talk about um well i suppose just the general embracing of these sorts of people and woke so-called woke progressives i don't think are, are remotely progressive myself but tony blair has urged keir starmer to reject wokeism in a commentary published today he's uh, the only the only labor prime minister in decades to actually get himself elected small point worth making has said labor should adopt commonsensical positions on culture issues i mean is anyone in the Labour Party listening, though? Uh, who knows? It doesn't seem like they are. And, you know, who ever thought that people like us would be agreeing so wholeheartedly with Tony Blair? Oh, I, mean, I'm, I agree with Tony Blair on lots of things. I, I've, I've, I mean, when it comes to Europe, no. But otherwise, yes. he's pretty. I voted for him in the early days. He was pretty sane. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking mainly about Europe and the stuff that he did on Brexit over the past few years. But to his credit, on the woke issue and on Labour's loss of the working class vote, he's been very, very good and very solid. And one of the key, I think one of the most important points he makes in this commentary he's done about wokeness and why re Labour should reject it, he says Labour is losing the loyalty of the working classes. And that is really true because... What's happened is Labour has become the property of these kind of middle class graduates who are painfully woke, who all did weird kind of media studies, cultural studies, interpretive studies dance. Stuff. And all that stuff at university that the rest of us don't understand and have no interest in. And so th there is a real problem with the massive shift of Labour away from working class concerns yep. and towards these bizarre woke obsessions. So he's right. If yep. they want any chance at the ballot box, they've got to reject all that stuff. Um, and let's also talk about um, a comments from a Conservative MP, Nick Fletcher, yesterday. He's been much mocked on social media um, after he said that uh, basically young men are committing crime because the Cray twins are some of the few remaining male role models that they see on screen. He did point out later he was making a more nuanced point, but he said that basically when you've got so many of our theme of the male role models being sort of basically replaced with women, um, let's actually if we've got got the actual clip of him speaking actually, let's have a listen to that. Oh, apologies. I thought my team just said they did have the right. Apologies. What he said was um, in recent years, we've seen Doctor Who, Ghostbusters, Luke Skywalker, The Equalizer, all replaced by women. And men are left with a craze and Tommy uh, Shelby. Uh, obviously, Jodie Whittaker being much criticised as the first female Doctor Who by, by, by quite a lot. Then we saw an all female lineup of the remake of Ghostbusters. Um, it was a very glib point and I'm not sure he made it very well. But, but it is a fair point, isn't it, that so many of the strong male role models, even, you know, James Bond, oh, it should be a female James Bond. It's like boys are being told, you know, that what that, that, that lots of the ideas that we had about what a, what a strong man was are, are wrong somehow. Yeah, I think he, he definitely made his point a little bit clumsily. I mean, I, I actually think Jodie Whittaker has been a very good Doctor Who, but you're right, you know, all this stuff about having to replace James Bond with a woman and all that nonsense is obviously for the birds and, and doesn't make sense. But I think buried beneath the kind of controversy over his Doctor Who crime point, he made some good arguments, particularly about the way in which masculinity is now seen as increasingly toxic. And he said, we have to defend masculine values and we should encourage boys and young men to embrace the positive side of masculinity. You know, one of the things that winds me up about people like Benedict Cumberbatch, who this week came oh, out and said, yeah. we've got to tackle toxic masculinity. And commentators are saying that kind of thing all the time. They don't realize that they enjoy safety and comfort in society, largely because there are other people out there who use their supposedly max masculine values to keep us 
safe. Yes. The police, the army, fire service, people on the border. If the toxic those... masculinity of all those men who collect the rubbish every morning. Yeah, I mean, really? Absolutely. And the toxic masculinity of the of the blokes who go around to these people's houses to fix their guttering or do some heavy lifting while they're writing their articles about horrible <laughs> yes. ma oh, masculinity. Totally. You know, totally. it's so it's the, the irony of it is bizarre, but they have no clue that most men and most women actually value masculine values and Absolutely. think they're important. So Nick Fletcher had a good point, but it kind of got a bit buried. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more.